right, all right. Well, welcome to Chopping It Up with the Genie. This is uh, our pre 4th of July special. We want some sparks to fly tonight, too, because we're talking about uh, making money and black empowerment. So give yourselves a round of applause for coming on out this, this 3rd of July, right before the holiday. And you can stay all night, get all your questions answered about how you're going to become a millionaire, and you don't have to worry about being tired for work in the morning because most people in the room are off tomorrow. Anybody in the, in the room here got to work tomorrow? We got one sister in the room here. Everybody else said we off. Everybody that's off, raise your hand. If you're off tomorrow, you don't got to go into work. That's what I'm talking about. So we all, <laughs> that's how we want it to be. You want to enjoy yourself. Uh, for everybody out there that's, that's tuning in, we are at Everlasting Life. It's a vegan restaurant, but it's also an oasis for uh, black progressive ideas, ideology, talking, eating, and, 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 and health, uh, uh, mental, physical, and spiritual. You can come here and have healthy dialogue, discussions, like we're going to have tonight. This is actually a first in terms of chopping it up, of how this particular chopping it up happened. So I want to let people know because I'm as excited as everybody out there that's tuning in. Um, for brothers and sisters who are tuning in, as a matter of fact, one, one thing I want to do, can we take it now, it's going live, and make sure that we have, uh, oh, we've already, already posted it, okay, great. So if you're on Irritated Genius Southeast page, you're watching it live, it's also streaming live from William Murray's page, and Murray is M-U-R-R-Y. And I just want to tell a little bit about what we're doing here, and then get right into it. We promised his brother to add the time for him to give his message, because all of us want to figure out how we can make some money on our own. Um, we use this facility, and we come out here and we support, we, we use the facility to help let the community come and share the information and talk about the issues confronting the black community, one of which is economics, absolutely. We all trying to make some money. And uh, we thank Dr. Baruch and the Everlasting Life staff for allowing us to do that. Let's give them a round of applause for opening up the facility and the doors for having them. We do this every Monday, 6 to 9 p.m. We usually start around 6.20, 6.30, giving people a chance to get off work. But if we see it, it starts at 6.30 to 9, people wouldn't get here to 7. So we just go ahead and say 6 to 9, and we're gonna keep it that way. Uh, and, and then we get started around 6.20, 6.30, and we go on through the night, however long it takes to get the message out to our people. Uh, one of the things we ask everybody to do, we usually take a break today. I don't think we're gonna take a break. What we're gonna do um, is I'm going to tell you now, and at any given time during the discussion or dialogue that you want to do, if we get to a point of a break, that's fine. If not, make sure that you purchase something from the restaurant, whether it's juices, whether you're going to get some of the delicious food that's healthy, whether it's cakes, they got juices in there, they got all kinds of raw food and cooked food. Whatever it is that you want, they have it in there that's healthy for you, a healthy alternative to what's being put out in our community. And that's how we help pay the bills here and make it worth the while of the brother opening up his establishment to the community. Mm -hmm. With our supporting this same establishment, it all works out. So that's the typical business, and I want to jump right into what happened. Give the we, address. I'm sorry? Give the address. Uh, the address again, 9185 Central Avenue. That's 9185 Central Avenue, Capitol Heights, Maryland. So. Uh, we want everybody to come on out live so you can check it out and ask your questions. Also, if you're on William Murray, M-U-R-R-Y, if you go to his Facebook page, if you have any questions, you can ask it on that stream or Irritated Genius Southeast, uh, that page as well. We, 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 we've shared the stream live, so you can ask questions there as well. And if we see those questions, we'll also share so that you might have some of your questions about economics and how to help improve your economic condition, and we'll let the brother know and he can help answer those. We were having a discussion, I believe it was, you know, the second Tuesday of every month, we have a radio program in here from two to four, and we talk about the gender issues, the gender wars, and we gotta end the war between black men and women. We gotta work together to build healthy families. And we were having a discussion about that, and this one was the evening discussion at 6 p.m. We were talking and dialoguing, and it was a, it was a strong dialogue. And the brother was in the back and was start standing up and said, wait, let me just interject. He just was bringing it. I mean, he was bringing it. And he started bringing the information, talking about economics and how we got all these problems, but we're not going to be able to fix them if we're not able to do something economically so that we can be self-sufficient 
so that we can uh, finance the changes that we're talking about. And because we were in a nice zone with the male-female relationships, I was like, I don't want to go too far because it was getting so good when he was talking. People started shifting the conversation from male-female relationships. And everybody was like, man, this is good stuff. So we finally had to say, okay, look, bro, this is what we're going to do. You say you got the magic. He said, I got the magic. I got the young people. And for those that can't see right now, we got one, two, three, four. Four young people that was here helping them set everything up. Uh, it's beautiful, you know. So not only is he doing the economics himself, but he's helping train other young people how to be entrepreneurs. So we love what we're seeing here. Now, never heard the brother's uh, 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 presentation before. So I'm going to be a first timer just like everybody else that is going to be listening. But this is what I want people to understand about uh, the Everlasting Life Chopping It Up sessions. Why it's so important to come out. Just like this brother who says he has things to share, but he's just got to have the audience that wants to hear. The beautiful thing about the Chopping It Up sessions when you come out, everybody is equals here. As long as we orderly and respectful, if you got something to give, nobody's looking at what your education is this or who you know or any of that. You come out, you black, you got something to say that's a value to our people. We let you talk. We want to hear what you got to say. And if you say, hey, I got something that everybody needs to hear, we give people opportunities like we're doing here today where this brother says, look, I know about entrepreneurship, and I can help other people know about it. And we say, you know what? Well, then why don't we take one of these Mondays? Because there's a lot of Mondays in the year, right? I think it's like 52 of them or something like that. Why can't we take one and say, well, then, brother, look, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to let you come up here. Take your best shot, share the information you have about economic independence for black people with our folks, and come on out here and do that. So he said, I'm going to do it. And sure enough, we got in contact after that time. And what did he do? He said, look, let's do it. We set a date and a time. And the brother was here early with the whole team of young people setting it up. He said, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get this information going, teach people about economic empowerment. And that's how this whole event happened. So I'm saying that to say, one, that we're excited because we're going to get something new and fresh, and all of us are going to be first time of hearing this information from this brother. And secondly, I want people to understand this is an opportunity that is open for people who have your own businesses in this area or your own expertise in certain areas. You, this forum is open for you to come and share your information. Here we got another weekly brother that's here every week we can rely on. So people, I told my brother, they're coming in. Don't you worry, brother. They, you talk about money, they're going to be here. <laughs> so last thing I want to say before I bring my brother William Murray up is next week is going to be the second Monday of the month of July, July 10th. And on both programs, we're going to concentrate again. We're dealing with the gender wars and then the war between black men and black women. We have a sister named Dr. Crystal Owens. This is a magnificent system. Not only does she have youth programs, if you go up to uh, on Facebook, you'll see where we show the Straight Black Garden, where she brought out 15 youth, not only to help our brother that's doing our Warner Horizon Gun Club do his feeding the homeless. Right there in Southeast on Good Hope Road, all of those young people were out there vibrant, helping feed the homeless out there. But then after they went that, they brought them in the bus right on over to a house, a local home with a brother that frequents here who said, I want a garden. Give me one of them straight black gardens. I'm straight, I'm black, and I want, you know, I got pride. Give me a garden too. And so we came out there, and at just the cost of the, the wood and the dirt, we actually came out there, and she brought those youth there. And you actually can see the videos. We actually had the youth taking the drill, putting the nails in the wood, and laying everything out, and shoveling the dirt, and building the garden, actually taking the plants and putting them in. From start to finish, they were there participating in the process. So we're talking about teaching our people how to be self-sufficient. Well, next week, from 2 to 4, uh, Dr. Crystal Owens is going to be talking to us because she's also a family counselor. counselor. She's going to be, uh, she's an expert in relationships, and she's going to be talking about how we can repair the relationship between black men and black women. Again, that second Monday of every month on the radio, we always will be talking about that. We figured... Since we got such a special guest like her in from 2 to 4 next week, we're going to not only have her on the radio in the first part of the day, but at 6 o'clock, we're then going to invite her in again to have our discussion forum like we have it now so that people can be here live. Let's 
nail down these real questions that we have about black male female relationships. Let's take someone who's married, who is an expert in counseling and helping our people deal with these issues, and is also knowledgeable about the condition of our people, so she can talk about black male female relationships on multiple levels. Come on out next week, July 10th. You're gonna really, really, truly enjoy and love this experience. This is a phenomenal sister, uh, brilliant, uh, uh, achieved. When it says doctor, that doctor ain't there. She's not Dr. J, you know, she's not playing basketball. It's a real doctor. She went through the process of getting that degree and she's using it to help our people. So we look forward to seeing you next week. It's gonna be something you're gonna love and enjoy. With that said, I don't wanna take any further ado because you didn't come here to hear me. You came here to figure out how you will make some money. How you gonna turn your economic situation around and become economically self-sufficient. And I came for the exact same thing. And so we had a brother that says he knows how to do it. And today we are gonna test that hypothesis of how well he knows how to do it because he's gonna come up here and from now until the end of this discussion, he's gonna be the guy we're gonna be pointing our questions to. If I get involved at all on the mic, it's just gonna be to control and, and get the people to see who wants to ask some questions or somebody might be shy that I hear a question might come up and ask them. But pretty much what we're going to do is release the chopping it up with the genie floor to a brother who says he got the magic on teaching black people how to deal with our economic situation. So without any further ado, I would ask that you give us a nice applause for our brother who volunteered his services to us, Brother William Murray. Well, I want to thank all of you who came out, and as always, it is a pleasure. I always say the God in me blesses and greets the God in you. So give yourself a hand for being here for this presentation. Now, I'm, I'm very nervous, y'all. I haven't done this no more than a few hundred times. <laughs> so I'm hoping that today that y'all get what I'm going to try to give you. Because the problem that we as a people have is we don't understand what it takes. See, they got you thinking. Because they say, well, you in the hood, you in the ghetto, or you're black, that you have no money. But if you look at the fact that all other nationalities come to this country and open up a, a business in our neighborhoods telling you that's where the money is. That is definitely where the money is. I'm the president of the Millionaire Mastermind Institute. I always come on and say, hello, success in heirs. And people wonder, well, what is a success in heir? Because that, well, as this says, success in heir, in the William Murray Book of Words, success in heir is one who is continuous in their efforts, in their research, their session attendance, business practice, and one who is open-minded eager to learn, and with a no quit attitude, and constantly moves forward. Now, I, I love to play on words. I do, and I'm an affirmation junkie. And y'all will find this, I, I'm gonna throw a lot of affirmations at you. A lot of them you've never heard, because I write a lot of affirmations. As a matter of fact, my next book is gonna be titled, From the Mind of William Murray, where I'm going to give you page and page of affirmation because I teach people how to see things with the third eye and hear things with the third ear, which means it takes you deeper than what it is I'm saying to give you the understanding of what says in affirmation is nothing more than almost a full understanding and conversation in one or two sentences. And then you got to look and understand the meaning of that. Okay, I'm trying to get this thing to work. Naysayers have no value in a successionary's life. Now, if anyone wants to take notes, 
and you have no paper, just hold your hand up. We have paper and pencil for you. For those who don't know that when you come to an event like mine, you need pencil and paper. Because here's what I, here's what I like for you to do. If I say something that gives you a great aha moment, you can applaud. Or if I say something, you might say, oh, wow, you can always give me a, a snap. You know how you do when you go to the ports. You can always give a snap. There you go. That's to let me know that you're listening, you're there, and I'm saying something. Because here's something y'all don't know about speakers. You feed us. You feed us. You give us the mood and the attitude as for what we teach and how we teach. So a, a plot or a snap, I love it. Five D is about a success on air. And you notice the word is spelled S-U-C-C-E-S-S -S -S capital I in A-I-R-E. Why? Because success is our goals. The capital I is who? You. It's me. That's right. It's you. And there, like a millionaire, means an abundance of. So success in there. And here's the thing about success in there, and this is the fact. If you are a success in there long enough, you will eventually become a millionaire and possibly beyond. Now, who in here would, would like to be a millionaire? When everybody's hammering. Nobody here don't want, want, want to live under the millionaire banner. <laughs> well, we will get, I'm going to show y'all how to become a millionaire, how easy it is. It's really not that hard. It's like everything else in life, there's a system to it. Everything has a system. And I'm, I'm going to give y'all a system. Because I'm going to get kind of heavy. I might tell a joke here or there or say something to make you laugh and maybe say something to make you cry. But I'm going to give you facts. And here's the truth about a fact. Facts are undefeated. The truth is undefeated. And I want to give you both truth and a fact. Success in there is no. They have a purpose long before they have an opinion. Now, do y'all understand how? But that, and that's it's your third eye and third ear. Success and heirs know they had a purpose long before anyone had an opinion. Oh, you can't do that. Why are you going to try to do that? So and so tried to do that. They couldn't do that. But you knew your purpose of why you were going to do that and what it was going to do for you in the long run, long before I had an opinion of telling you that you couldn't do it. So we got to learn to concentrate and think about what we want, not what people tell us. They think, they think our capabilities are. Who am I to tell you your capability? Think about it. You're going to let someone that hasn't done what you want to do tell you you can't do it. That's like going to a person sitting at the foot of a mountain and asking him, man, how do you climb that mountain? What's he going to tell you? He can't tell you because he's never climbed. So why are you asking someone questions that they really don't have the answer to? They, they just guess it. You want to put yourself in a position around people who have been to that mountaintop, who has climbed that mountain. I'm blessed enough, y'all, that I get a chance to hang around people of wealth. And I get a chance to pick their brain, and they get a chance to pick mine, all those small pickings. <laughs> and the conversations that we have, because I put myself in the place and the position to get a chance to meet them. Now, I'm a 40-year-plus entrepreneur. I have been an entrepreneur for over 40 years. Do you know what it's like not to have a boss? Well, no, I'm not going to say that. Cause I got married. I got a boss. <laughs> but to, have, to get up when I want to get up, lay down when I want to lay down, as long as from can't see sun up to can't see sun down, I'm doing what needs to be done. Because the reward is so astronomical. 
and I am now in my pleasant years, and it's comfortable to me. Why? Because I've been out here fighting and doing it for so long that now that I'm here, it's comfortable to me. Because I made it a comfort, and we're going to talk about comfortness. Because, see, I've earned this. This is not a gift. I earned this. Success in there, success in there. And I want each one of you to become a success in there. It's not in the dictionary yet because uh, they don't realize my brilliance. But one day they will. When everybody goes, I've got people all through my teachings and all over the country now talking and using the word success in there. And see, that gives you a chance to teach them something they don't know and gives you a goal to work toward because you've got to have a goal. You have to have a goal. If you don't have a goal and you don't have dreams, what do you have? Absolutely nothing. Success in there is no to keep the main thing, the main thing. Now, what that's saying is, you got people say, well, you know, I want to sell this. I'm, I, I want to be a, 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 on, a, on a, 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 dog, a, a dog shelter. I want to sell Avon. I want to be an author, and I want to do this. And I want, no, that's not how it works. What that does is make you a jack of all trades and a master of none. So it means you are forever going to be a struggle. Because as long as you're taking two hours from this to work on this and two hours to work on this to work on this, you've left no time for that which is going to make you money and give you wealth. Keep the main thing, the main thing. Now, I got news for you. Being president of the Millionaire Mastermind Institute, this is not my first business. But I've grown into this. And to be able to stand in front of people all across the country, to go to these companies, these corporations, these universities, these churches, these private organizations, and teach them the thought and actual process, the mindset of success. I've lived it. I've studied it. And I've studied it. And I've taught it. And I've studied it. And I've taught it. And I've studied it. And I'm still studying it. Doesn't a day go by that I don't study these four hours a day? Why? I already know it. Why am I still studying? Because times change, things change. And if I'm not keeping up with what's going on, how can I teach you? How can I teach you if I don't know? Now, you've got to, like I say, the jack of all trades and the master of none. Stay in your lane. I know what my lane is. I've got all these brilliant brilliant educators part of the university, part of the institute that come in and teach what I don't know. See, my, my specialty, I know what it is. I stay in my lane. Now, today I'm an educator. I'm standing here before you. I go to many, many events where I'm just a student, just like you're sitting out there. I too am a student. I'm always in the learning mode. Even today, I'm in the learning mode. Because I'm learning <laughs> what I know that I can teach you. Because hearing me is teaching me what I know. Your reaction to what I'm teaching tells me whether or not I'm giving you the right information that you need to hear. That's why I said, you feed the room. See, you feed me. Because I'm watching. I'm, I got one young lady in here that is, that is absorbing stuff, and she's got me high as a kite right now. Because I'm watching her take in what I'm teaching her, and she's enjoying it. She doesn't know that I know, but I'm watching because she's feeding me energy. I don't even know if she knows that she's the one. But I appreciate it. Y'all, I have a lot so much to go through today. Oh, I got 
tons of stuff to give you today. And I can talk to y'all, by the way. I'm, I, I can go, my mouth goes a mile a minute. And that's when I'm moving in slow motion. <laughs> I'm William Murray, the president of the Millionaire Mastermind Institute. And I am here today to empower you. I'm here to give you the necessities for you to reach the highest plateau possible. We all have somewhere we want to go, we want to be. You know, and, and I wrote this out because I, I, I got this, but I wanted to give you all this the way I wrote it because I'll, I'll get off track. That's the reason I've heard something to PowerPoint. But today I said I do a problem, so I really want to stay focused. But I've got something I really, really want to give you. This is my dream, but I also know that dreams and goals are meant to be shared and acted upon in order to reach them. And that's also you. See, I may say I, but it's not only I. I'm talking to you. So you put yourself in my place when I tell you what I tell you. A long time ago, I learned that no one can be successful and accomplish their dreams and goals alone. No one can do it alone. It's true no man is an owl. I love the song that Barbara Streisand sings when she says, People who need people are the luckiest people in the world. Loneliness is a beast. It makes you do things. It makes you miss things. It makes you appreciate things that are right there before you. We love and appreciate it. The Million Dollar Mastermind Institute is not an I thing. I say this often. It is a we thing. Today, today, truthfully, it's all about you. And with Professor William Murray, the mindologist, and that I am. And y'all say, well, what is that? That's another one of William Murray's words. Because I work on your mind. That's my expertise. I don't know how to, I can teach marketing and branding, but it's not my forte. I can teach you about licensing, but it's not my forte. I can teach you all about business, everything, but it's not my forte. It's not my expertise. And I'm here, and I can help do to help you in your empowerment growth. That's why I'm here. My expertise is I teach you the thought and the action process to success. What that is, everything, everything first goes through thought. Because that was an accident, yeah, but it had to go through thought and be an accident. Everything, everything, everything goes through thought. And the action behind what you think, do you know what success is? Success is only two things. Hello? How many thought success is more than two things? It's only two things. It's giving to your God and working toward it. Give to your universe, your universal God, your mind universe. Give it to that and then work toward it. Here's the thing about it. Once you give it to your universe, you have just given your universe, your God, an assignment. And here's the thing about when you give it an assignment. It knows to go to work for you. And it's going to work 10 times as hard as you to give you what you want. What is success? Giving it to your God and working toward it. You're looking at living proof, y'all. I travel the country in front of thousands of people. All these educated minds, these doctors, these doctorates, these PhDs, these master's degree people. And why they listen to poor little old man? So I'm just giving you food for thought. I teach you how to think and the action needed. It's simple. See, I'm going to give you the process as time goes on. I'm going to make you think. But I'm going to have fun, too. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I really do. I mean, 
Sometimes I get a little long drawn, I get, I, get, I get boring, but I try not to. I try to be an infotainer, to give you information while I'm entertaining you. <coughs> but in everybody's life, things happen. I just had something major happen to me. And I don't know if y'all know it. I, mean, I know you don't know it. But less than three months ago, I, I had triple bypass heart surgery. Never been sick a day in my life. Never been to the hospital. Never taken from soon. I go to the doctor's house. The doctor says, you're healthy. Your heart's strong. Your blood pressure's nice. Your, your diabetes, none. Cholesterol, great. But you need triple bypass heart surgery. Well, hi, doctor. I'm, never, I'm healthy. She, and I'm the female doctor. She says, you're not sick now. You just have a part of your body that's not operating properly. You have three blocked arteries and you only have four. So you only get 25% of the blood to your heart that you need. I have yet to feel sorry or mad about the situation. I have yet to say, well, why me? Why did this happen to me? Because, it, you know why it happened to me? Because I would rather it happen to me than you. I can handle it. Never been sick. Ride my bike 10 miles a day. Play tennis. On stage, on travel all the time. And all of a sudden, them tell me that I need triple bypass heart surgery. Then I realized why I need a triple bypass heart surgery. I love so hard. I love so many. And I love so much. I want more in my heart. So now that I have those replaced, I got a new heart, y'all, and I got more love to give. And those out there who need love, bam, baby, come get it. It's here. Thought, I keep telling you, thought. That's the reason I'm an expert on thought. Because I realize the power of it. It's the beginning of everything. It is the beginning of everything. I, William Murray, the mindologist, am your GPS system to success. I'm not being conceited, I'm really not. I guess I'm just convinced. <laughs> You know, I, when I was growing up, well, when I was younger, I used to love to pick up my nieces and nephews. I was a single, I was a bachelor, had my crib laid out, you know, doing that bachelor thing. And I used to pick them up on weekends. And there's four of them, two girls and two boys. They were like eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I picked them up for years. And they'd spend a weekend with me. And we, I mean, right today, they tell you about the things that we did, how much fun they had. I didn't have any children. I love my family. And they used to call me Learning Lloyd. And I enjoyed it. They didn't know how much I appreciated them calling me Learning Lloyd. My middle name is Lloyd, by the way, y'all. And my niece told me, said, Uncle Lloyd, you're not a trip. You're a complete jerk. <laughs> Do you know what that meant to me? And I still use that. I am not a trip. I am a journey. And I take advantage of the fact that I am a journey. Okay, let's talk about the power of the mind. Mm -mm -mm. I'm really getting ready to lay something on y'all kind of out there. Can y'all hear me? Yes. yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does it take any period of time? Do y'all see I'm in white and I'm a good looking black man? <laughs> All that, I told you, you know, I'm just convinced y'all, hey, you know. And I'm going to tell y'all why I keep telling myself, but I'm, let me get to where I'm going. With the power of the mind. And I asked you, could you hear me? You said yes. Did you understand what I was saying? You said yes. Did you see that I'm standing here in white? Did you see my sign of how great I really am to the world I am? And I got, you see this book right here? It's called The Road to Success to Business Bible. And I'm going to tell y'all about that too and show you how you can make money off of just what you think. How easy it is. But the power of the mind. Here's how powerful the mind is. Because you see me instantly, you hear me instantly, you understand me instantly. Your mind moves 930,000 times faster than sound. 
Hello. Can I get a snap on that? Anybody? Think how fast that is that your mind moves 930,000 times faster than sound. What is that called? Power. Power. That's power. That's why I tell you that everything goes through thought. See, it's about how you take it and what you do about it that makes you great or makes you a failure. Once I change my mindset and learn to realize that my mind is what gives me and controls my life. Why I didn't get angry and ask God, God, why me? When you give me trip bypass, I've never been sick, never been in the hospital, and never done nothing wrong to nobody. I don't eat meat, pork, dirt, pot, smoke, drink, or nothing. And now I got to have triple bypass heart surgery. I have yet to ever ask him, why me? I've always said, why not me? And that's how I see life. Anything that goes on, why not me? Be successful, why not me? To be loving, why not me? To be as good looking as I am, why not me? <laughs> now, I'm going to tell you all uh, 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 something about me saying that. I'm the greatest. Who always, who always said that? I'm the greatest. Ali. Muhammad Ali. The champ is here. The champ is here. Who was that? Muhammad Ali, and he said that before he became champion. Why did he say that? He understood the power of the mind. He had his opponents whipped before he got him in the ring. I'm going to knock you out in seven and had a poem about it. I'm going to knock you out in three and had a poem. And then he, he beat him before they got in the ring. What did he do? He controlled their mind. So when you learn to control your mind, there is nothing you can't accomplish. What does it take? Getting to your God and doing the action behind it. I keep telling y'all, look at me. I'm standing here before you. And I'm going to give you one heck of my hope and education. And I got news for you. And maybe I shouldn't tell y'all this. All I've got is a high school education. Why do I speak behind before all these brilliant people, these companies, and they pay me these thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to come speak for them and teach their employees or show them a better way to make more money? More money, more money, more money. Why do they pay me that? Because I've spent, see, here's the thing I'm going to tell you. Understand this. A general education. High school diploma, degree, mastered everything. It's okay, it'll give you a job, or maybe keep you working. But a self-education will give you wealth beyond anything you've ever imagined. Look at me, high school diploma, making all this money. Teaching those who have been to college, and I'm not telling you not to go to college, it is definitely a necessity. Education is a necessity. Knowledge and information is today's currency. But like I told you, four hours a day. Y'all think I'm getting about that four hours a day. Doesn't a day go by I'm not four hours studying, learning, listening, reading, at events like this. In order for me to be able to stand here and give to you now, y'all gonna find out later on, and now you really gonna pick it up because you, you don't make y'all aware of it. People told me that Mr. Murray, they didn't say William said you never, man, you're not gonna make it. Your country, you don't have a big education and you stutter. Yes, I do stutter, and somewhere along the line, y'all will start me, hear me start stuttering here and there. I don't care. I went to this lady one time. I was a realtor in real estate. And I was speaking all over the place. So I went to her and said, look, why don't you let me do a session to all the agents here and teach them what I know? To help them do better in their real estate. She said the best thing to me that no one said to me in a long time. 
she told me, you're not successful enough. Think about that. <laughs> it's comical to me. You know what I did? Now, who might y'all guess what I did? Huh? No, you know what I did? I got from I got from the table, sitting at, at a meeting in her office, and I got told her thank you and walked out. And I told myself I am, and I told her I was gonna do it for free. And I told myself I'm not gonna argue her right. Yes, I can. I know I, I, I'm not gonna argue you right. I'm gonna go and success you wrong. Big difference. Think about the difference in arguing them right to just going about and successing them wrong. Hello? What would you rather do? Arguing them right or just go out and success them wrong? Well, a few months later, she came and said, oh, William, I've seen several of your things and someone told me that you spoke here, you spoke there, you went to a couple other real estate agencies. Come on back in here and do your session you want to do. I told her, fine, $2,500. <laughs> said, well, you told me you were going to do it for free. I said, that was then. But now you got to pay me. I got paid. What did I go out and do? I didn't argue her right. What did I go out and do? I successed her wrong. That's what you got to do in life. See, I want, like I'm telling you, I teach the thought and action process to success. I want to make you think and see things with that third eye and that third ear because you realize that's the strongest sense that you have, stronger than any sixth sense is your sixth sense. And that's the way you see things with your third eye and hear them with your third ear. Am I giving y'all anything? Any information? Any knowledge? Yes. yes. I mean, I just want to know because, I mean, y'all so quiet. Y'all can hear you right now. You can hear Nat P on cotton. <laughs> and that's quiet. And maybe I shouldn't say that. But y'all, we adults. We having fun. At least I am. Y'all ain't got to have no fun. I'm loving this. Now I've told you something more about the power of the mind. When you prepare the mind, life gets easy. You look at someone that, in my younger youth, you wanted to fight, mm -hmm. step to me. Oh, we out in the parking lot didn't mean a thing. You want to get cussed out? Oh, man, I know them 12 and 13 letter words. And good at them. But then I learned that it's easier and more successful Let me know. Give me time. I lost my flow. Tell me where I was. Something about getting easier. Yeah. Oh yeah, but you know what I realized? That you can get more with sugar than you can with. Y'all know what I want to say. <laughs> and I changed how I was. And life and everything got so easy, so great. It, I started meeting people. And then I got around, really got around people, some of the greatest minds in America. Y'all don't realize this, but I'm, I'm in the history books. But I'm not going to get into that. That's another, that's, another, that's another time and another thing. But the power of the mind is totally up to you. Do you want to have a positive mind? Or a negative mind. If you're positive, you get positive things. If you're negative, you get negative things. See, you control, you control what goes in. And you control what comes out. Once you realize the power that you have, you have. Because see, one of the first things I'm telling you, I'm, I want y'all to write this one down. Write this one down. The first thing you must realize is that you have been miseducated. When you realize how miseducated you have been, 
you will seek the proper education, and that's when you come to people like me and my institute. But I told you, truth and fact is undefeated. I am 89 million and old, and going for 90 million. You've got to learn how to use your mind that's yours to use to give you what you want. Every morning, I pray every morning. The morning, don't, I don't pray. But guess what? My prayer is no more than just four words. My prayer every morning is thank you. More please. More happiness. More joy. More people to love. More education to give out. And more time to pass the knowledge around that I have. You know something I always tell people? And it's true. I'm brilliant. Do you realize how brilliant this person standing before you is? I'm like Muhammad Ali when he said, the champ is here. He was the greatest. Well, I'm telling y'all, I'm brilliant. But all you got to do is tap into my mind. Because I'm just giving you a very, very simple taste of what I really, really give, what I do. You attend one of my classes, and I really say I'm going to give you a class. When I stand out at night or during the day and I look up to the heavens, look how powerful my mind is. I say, behold, to me, the only thing that's greater than myself, the universe, is the only thing that's greater than me. And when your mind tells you that, and your mind is that, that puts you in a position for failure is not an option. Because I realized a long time ago, failure is just like time. It's just passing through, baby. Just like yesterday, what did it do? It just passed through your life, didn't it? That's what failure is. It just passes through. You can do anything that you put your mind to. I got a question I want to ask y'all. Can he live that? Nope. <laughs> you got to be realistic. What is that, about 300 pounds? And what is he, maybe a year, 18 months? Can he live that? Nope. Now, I'm going to tell you what. Okay, 350, can he lift it? Nope. The answer is yes, he can. When he grows into the person who can. Hello. Somebody say that. Who said that? Somebody said not now. Who said that? Oh, hey, baby. Oh, she don't count. That's my that's my that's my baby girl right there, y'all. That's my baby girl. <laughs> so you know she gonna know. You know I love you, darling. And there's nothing you can do about it. But the, now, okay, here's here's the thing about. I'm, I'm gonna show you how I'm seeing this. That barbell is your life. That barbell is your business. That baby is you. You are eventually going to grow into the person that can run that business that you want. That can live that life that you want. What does it take for you to do that? Just the knowledge and education and the studies to do that. That's all. Does that make sense? Can he live that? Not now. Right, not now. But he can grow into the person who can. That was that's you with when you want what you want. Look at me. This institute is something I wanted. I put it together and I worked on it. And now it's known, you know, it's known better outside of this area than in this area. People say, the millionaire master my institute, you teach me how to become millionaires. Yes, I do. I know the process. I know what it takes. I'm going to give it to y'all. See, people tell me I'm crazy. Good. It's the crazy ones 
that make change in the world for the better. The crazy ones. Those who say, regardless of what you say, I know I can. I know I can. Okay, come on, thing change. I'm gonna do it about one more time. I might have to. I don't even like. Oh, there it is. See that? They laugh at me because I'm different. I get the best laugh because they're all the same. Look at Mark Zuckerberg. How crazy they tell you? Did they tell me was? Look at Steve Jobs. How crazy they told him. He look at Oprah. When they told her, you can't do that. You're too black, you're a woman, and you're too overweight. What did she do? She didn't argue them right. What did she do? Success them wrong. There you go. She success them wrong. That's me. Oh, your country, you got a high school education, and you study. So no, <laughs> I like being different. It's we people, we crazy ones, that makes reality, reality. How many people in here are different from everybody else? Do you know why? Because you are unique, just like everybody else. But it's your uniqueness going to give you your greatness. That's all I'm asking you. Is your uniqueness going to give you your greatness? Mine is. See, I'm building my legacy where, my, where I can go generational and they don't have to worry about anything because I'm going to make sure that they're taken care of. Everybody wants to build that legacy. See, I want to get to where my family has old money. See, new money it's those who are just getting wealthy and getting rich. I want to have old money, which is generational for my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, and my great-great-grandchildren. That's called a legacy. And I always want to build a legacy. We all want to build a legacy. Y'all have no idea how proud I am to be the president of the Millionaire Mastermind Institute. It's not a gift. I earned it. I earned it. And the people that I have that also educate, I'm going to give y'all a chance to meet a lot of my educators later on because I'm going to do a session I want y'all to come to. That's going to be great for y'all to come. If you want to see a better tomorrow and put your business together from A to Z, I'm going to show you later on how to do from A to Z and put all your business plans together, all your business and start building and going. I'm going to show you how easy it is. Well, we go, he, go, he says we're going to take a no, break, take questions in a few minutes. But I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk about this is where your class comes in. Thinking like rich people think. I'm telling you right now, we don't think like your average common layman. We don't. Wait till you have a conversation with a rich person, and you're going to have a, con a conversation with an average or a poor person. Much difference as night and day. I'm around all kinds. I can give the same presentation, but I can't give it to the rich the way I give it to you. Well, I'm not saying I'm y'all beneath y'all. But I'm saying it's a different conversation because I've got to take the level to an uh, 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 avenue where they are. And I'm proud that y'all are here because you never know who no one is. I'm just like everybody else. I'm a common everyday Joe. You would never know who I am if I didn't tell you. You wouldn't. I can still have a conversation with you. We can talk about football, baseball, talk about life, politics, whatever. And until I told you who I really was, it's just like I'm going to tell y'all something now about me. I am one of the activists from the, from the uh, 80s, 90s, and 2000s that went to jail. So y'all had the freedom y'all had today. I've been arrested. I've been beat. I've been spat on. Just so y'all have the freedom that you have today. 
these marches that we had downtown D.C., we had 100,000 people, 20,000 people. I was one of the organizers. I was one of the organizers. I got a chance to sit down with the great, and I love him to death, Walter E. Fauntleroy. The man is brilliant. Dick Gregory, my brother, my brother, was my mentor for years. We used to hang just like this together. Brother Bay, who y'all, as you know, from on 8th Street. Brother was heavy. Dr. Smith, Bishop Stallings. I got a chance, Corinne Scott King. I got a chance to sit at the table around with all these people and have conversations while we were planning and doing and putting stuff together. I very seldom talk about that. But I told you, I'm in the history book. History is standing here before you. You never know who no one is. So you can't never judge a book by its cover. So I'm going to come back after the Q&A. I'm going to teach y'all how rich people think compared to the average everyday person. Uh, one of the things I want to do, and we're going to be able to keep going with the thing. He's going to go all the way through, but I did want, because I know some people have questions but don't like to stop somebody when they're in the middle of stuff, and I've seen people being kind of hesitant. Is there anyone in here now, we're going to take a quick uh, question and answer that has a question. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to mention, uh, I'm following him on Facebook, and Mr. Murray, you have someone on here who's asking, are you a more? Give them a little bit about your history and tell them how you, I mean, I know you said about you march with the greatest, but just give him a little history. I know he goes by the great mind educator, and that's what he's doing. He's educating our minds. He's about mindset. But let the person know, um, they ask, are you a more? Uh, no, I'm not. Not in the sense of, I'm not going to say ancestry because I'm black. So yes, in my ancestry. But as today, as far as studying uh, I mean, and, 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 and being of their faith, because you know, they had a faith, they had a belief. And I am very black. I am very black. I studied the concept of Maya. You would never ever see me without this on my neck. Truth and justice. You would never see me without that. Because mm -hmm. I had the, the privilege of being blessed and, and have a ceremony to get my spiritual name, which is Kipwe, Muata, Sangha, Bamadele. Kibwe means blessed. Mm -hmm. Because what am I first more than anything else every morning when I wake up? What am I? I'm blessed. Muata means searcher. Because what do I do four hours a day? I'm looking, researching, trying to find and get knowledge. So I'm a searcher. Sangha means from the valley. I'm from West Virginia. There are nothing but a mountain of valleys. Balmadele means from another land coming home because I've studied years and years and years about our ancient civilization, about us as a great people. So I'm a searcher, I mean, I'm a blessed searcher from the valley coming home. You wonder why I wear this? It's known as a kufi, which means crown. I'm a king. I am a king. All of us are if we do what needs to be done to get there. Did I answer the question? I'm sure you did. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you for that question. It's an excellent question. Do we have anybody else related? My brother, Dan. Um, Mr. Queen. Uh, you said, uh, there was something on the screen that said the power of the mind. Now, is that the power of the mind, or is that also include the power of the subconscious mind as well? How important is the subconscious mind? Very. Very. The subconscious mind is in more motion than the conscious mind. Because your subconscious mind 
is the depth of your thought. There it is right there. That's the depth of your thought. Your conscious mind is more of what you see, the reality of what, what you see, yeah. what you hear, what you think. Now, there's only one time in life when your mind is not in motion. Who can tell me when that is? Sleep. Sleep. Your conscious mind. Uh, Alex, make that man behind you a millionaire. <laughs> Is it true that the subconscious mind never sleeps? No, it never sleeps. Well, your mind never sleeps. But your subconscious is the depth. That's when you know. That's why when you wake up in the middle of the night, your mind is the strongest. When you wake up at two, three, four o'clock in the morning, that's when your mind is the strongest and the most powerful. And your spirit is the most powerful. And I'll get into spirit maybe when I get a chance. If I get a chance, talk about the spirit, your spirit. Why, why is that, bro? Why? why? Is that, well, I'm a writer, so. Okay, uh, now, what's I the write question? Two, yeah, I write 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. Why is it that? It seems like, um, as the Greeks say, when the spirit come down, uh, and the muse, as they say, what they got from us anyway. But when the muse come down, you lift it, almost lift it up out of yourself. I love that question. Oh, because you don't realize <laughs> how spiritual I am. My whole life is spirituality. My, my spirituality is, is, is much more powerful than religion. When you're sleeping and you awaken, Come on. it is your spirit that wakes you. Yes. What you should do, and I want y'all to start doing this and watch how your life is going to change. <coughs> Don't turn the TV on. Don't turn the radio on and just lay there and say these words, Spirit, talk to me. I'm listening. Now, I'm going to tell you how powerful your spirit is. Several months ago, several months ago, I was, I woke up about 3, 3.15. And as I said, that is the most powerful my, my spirit had been to me in a while. I was laying there, and my spirit gave me, hold on, this book. I am truly serious. It gave me this book. So for two hours, I'm sitting there, and my spirit said, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. I had no idea to write. This is not the book I was writing. I got up about five something. Went in my office, got on my left start and started typing. And I kept, I looked at and said, wow. This is beautiful. And again, it's like, some, it's like somebody else sitting there typing. And I'm just sitting there using my body. And then when I got to chapter six, I had no idea whatsoever the story climbing climbing success mountain climbing success mountain see your, your life is a mountain to climb my spirit gave me this total book well it gave me half of it this book is two books it's climbing success mountain and the road to success but when you read the book climbing success mountain you will find out about your spirituality. Now here's something that it did for me. Within this book's only two characters. Two. You and Mr. Success. You are the character in this book. You. How, I, I, this was above my, my pay grade. But my spirit gave it, I'm seriously, it gave it to me. And I had to sit down and write it. It took me, I wrote it within a day, day and a half. But it took me three months just to get it. I kept going every time I read it. Every time I read it, I, I changed it. And one day I read it to one of my groups like this. Everybody bum rushed me want to know, can we get a copy? I hadn't put it in book form yet. I just had it in story, in story form. My spirit came to me another morning and said, okay, put it in the book. Thank you. You want to read about you and your spirit? 
Here it is, climbing Success Mountain. And you're going to get something from this that you probably never ever thought of. Very good question, young man. Thank you. And to add to that, Mr. Murray, I know you teach at your bedside, keep a pencil and paper. Yes. So when you wake up, you put those thoughts down. Because when you wake up in the morning, you're not going to remember those thoughts. But in the middle of the night, when you wake up with these brilliant ideas, have pencil and paper so you can write it down. See, now, uh, I'm going to say something that I haven't told Scott to yet, but you're right. See this book? The Road to Success Business Bible. This can't even dream also. I had a dream one time years ago, and I didn't understand it because I'm not a Christian. How long did it take you? Oh, it's taken me about five years. But I'll explain to you why. And the dream told me to rewrite the Bible. I'm thinking I'm not a Christian, so I'm not going to read it. But what it was telling me was take my thoughts and put them in a book that would educate people on how to build their family well, how to build their family, how to build themselves, how to change their life. Everything in here is from a spiritual point of view. Here's the thing, and I'm going to get, I'm getting ahead of myself. You're looking over $10 million right there. Well, Mr. Murray, how is that? Because every page in this book, and there are hundreds, is a one is a thirty minute to an hour presentation. Every page. You know why? I'm telling you, if you think it, write this down. If you think it, ink it. If you think it, ink it. Here's what I'm doing right now, right this moment as we speak. I have taken twelve of those pages. Well, what it is, I, I, I got a show that I do every Tuesday evening, and I'm going to get into that later, too. And what I've done is every time I do my show, I, 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 I write it down. And now I'm getting it transcribed so that each show is a chapter in my book. If you think it, ink it. Any other questions? Talk to me, y'all. Talk to me. Yes, it is. Yes, the ink incorporated or ink as in write it down? Or ink as in write it down. I ain't Kate, darling. <laughs> <laughs> because here's the thing. Now, here's the thing that's going to show you growth. So you don't realize how much you grow. From January to December, from January 1 to December 31, I'm writing down. In the month of December, I read back what I wrote during the year. See, the only time, there's only one time you ever look back. And that's to see how far you've gone. But as you grow during the year and you look back and say, wow, look how I've changed and grown. Because I look at my show now, five years later, I'm saying, whoa, this is not the same person that sit down at this studio and started the show five years ago. I have grown so much. It has helped me so much because I have put in writing my thoughts that I can read. Because once you think it, your mind is so powerful, if you don't ink it, darling, you won't remember. And now, you know how many people are millionaires off of just writing their, their memoirs? Hello? So what is it if you think it? Ink it. Ink it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Am I showing you why the power of pens? You know what the most powerful thing in America is? An ink pen. An ink pen. It's more powerful than a bullet. An ink pen is the most powerful thing in the world for man. So remember, if you think it, to ink it. Any more questions? Yes, sir, my brother. Some of people say we are what we eat, and I believe that we are. But how much more are we what we think? How much more are we what we think? You are what you think. You are what you think. If you think you're no good, you're no good. If you think you're good, you're good. You see, if you think you're no good, all you got to do is change your mindset. See, y'all going to hear, I know y'all tired of hearing the word mindset, but there's nothing out there greater, more powerful, and more better for you to change and understand and educate than your mindset. You're looking at living proof. I told you, you want to fight. Bam, I'm the man. 
You want to get cussed out? Yes, I told you. I know them 12 and 13 that are words. You know what those are, right? Oh, I was good at them. <laughs> oh, I was good at them. I didn't stutter when I used them. <laughs> so, very good question. Now, what's the, what's the difference between your um, business Bible versus uh, biblical entrepreneurship that they have at the churches now? That's okay, because if that's what you're, if, if, put it this way. I can't tell you what to believe. Because whatever floats your boat in your moat, whatever gives you that pure of heart, it's great. So I'm asking you what the difference is. I mean, you know, in terms of what makes the business Bible something that everyone needs. What's your, what's your value? Part? Because it's, it's, uh, it's on business, not on religion. Okay. It, it's on strictly business. Now, I'm going to show y'all how y'all can get this. I'm, I'm going to give y'all a chance to get this. But I'm not going to tell you now. You got to hang around. And I'm going to tell you how to get it. I mean, you're talking about how many hours do you think that is of, of information and knowledge? And you got access. I'm going to give, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give y'all access to it. But like I said, you got to hang around, and I'll tell you how to get it. Is it all right if I take off my, my, my crown and shit? This king. Y'all still know I'm a king though, right? <laughs> it's getting Even a little warm. Huh? Even without the crown. Even without the crown, I'm still a king. Ask, ask my baby. Ain't that right, baby? That's my point. You know something about my, my, my wife and I? We've been together now for 25 years. Y'all don't realize how y'all don't, how, what y'all plot to is, that ain't even enough. She got to put up with me for 25 years. You know, I tried to divorce me, but I wouldn't leave me. I tried, but I wouldn't leave me. I tried to divorce me. Her to put up me for 25 years. And we have yet to have our first argument. That is power. That is power. But you got to realize, y'all, that's good on my part, too. Because, you know, it takes two to argue. And here's the thing about an argument. An argument is you trying to prove who's right. Oh, no, you're wrong. No, 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 you should have did. No, no, see, that's, that's wrong. You're trying to prove who's right. We have discussions. That's trying, trying to find out what's right. Who? Against what? What is the, is the education that you both want to get from realizing that she's half right and I'm half right and two half makes a what? Makes a whole. Now she can kick my butt any day she wants to, but I'm telling you, I am hard to deal with. I am stubborn. I am a mule ain't got nothing on me. A mule out there has nothing on me. But you know why I call her my queen? She's, she's my wife, but I tell you, she's my queen. And I do, but she can't open the door. She never walks behind me. She never walks on the side of the street. I cook. I, I got news. I just to here. This beautiful, handsome black man standing here who can cook. She doesn't have to cook unless she really, really wants to. I do the majority of the cooking. Oh yeah. When she goes, when she went to work, because I worked from home or I had a couple offices, I was home in time to make sure when she got home work, dinner was ready. She's not. When I married her, I had been a bachelor for so long. I took care of me. I didn't marry her to be my woman. I married her to be my queen. And that's how I treated her. That's why we don't argue. Cause she makes me her king. When I had this open heart surgery, she had to do me just like a baby. I couldn't even pull my underwear up. She had to do that for me. She had to wash my hair and sit there and brush my hair and dry. I know I just love that. I just like a dog, you know, when you rub it down. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying? That's when you find out that they really love you. You kidding? I didn't have enough energy to do nothing. She had to do everything for me. And she enjoyed it. She smiled. And I told everybody that that's my warden. Because she kept me in check. 
she kept me in check. You couldn't do this, I can't do that, because I'm not a go-getter. See, me be up here now, trust me, she got to close eye on me. Because she knows if I just had surgery less than three months ago, i got to be very careful standing up here. And trust me, she's got an eye. If I sway too much, she'll be here, grab me, and sit me down. Any other questions? All right, now we're going to get into thinking like rich people think. Are y'all ready with this? Yes. Y'all sure y'all ready with this? Yes. Yes, yes. All right, y'all. Hold on, strap in. Here we go. Average people think money is the root to all evil. Rich people believe poverty is the root to all evil. See the difference? Yeah. Big difference. If you think money is the root of all evil, only the only reason you think that is because you don't have none. <laughs> you just don't have any if you think money is the root. It's not money, it's not the root of all evil. The lack of money, the lack of, That's the is the root of all evil. That's How many times have you ever heard of a millionaire or a billionaire going in and with a gun holding a plank? Rob a store. <laughs> Mug somebody. <laughs> yeah, they may be corporate ripping you off, but they ain't put no gun in your face when you walk down the street and say, okay, give me your give me your watch. No. Give me your ring. That's right. It's not you got to see now here's, I want you, I want y'all to think about the difference in what I'm telling you. Now I y'all this is a lot of research y'all looking at now. I'm gonna give y'all a lot of I mean this is hours and hours of research. And study and read. The reason rich people think poverty is the root of all evil, because to be honest with you, 85% of them have been there. It's mindset. Mindset. To realize that it's poverty that's the root of all evil. Number two, I'm gonna get, it's 11 of them. I got 11, this is number two. Average people have a lottery mentality. Rich people have an action mentality. <coughs> Average people have a lottery I'm gonna go pay the lottery, Lord, look how much money's in there. I think I'll put $20 on to hit the lottery. Or I'm going to, that somebody's got a car and you can win, I'm going to give them $5 per ticket. That's the lottery mentality. Do you know what the odds is of hitting the lottery right now? It is very astronomical. And I'm going to tell y'all why. You do, now let me ask y'all this. This is something. Do y'all know why the lotteries now can get up into millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars? Where right, you used to not do that. Does anyone here really know how, how that happened? What they did is, lottery used to be you could pick a number between 1 and 55. Yeah. And it gave you a better chance of hitting. They changed it now to 1 and 76, because now you got to hit the, the numbers are in between 1 and 76. Do you know how much that increased the probabilities of you hitting? From 1 to 55 to 1 to 76. Because now you got to pick them between 1 to 76. That's how the number the lottery is worth so much. Do you know how much money they make off you trying to hit that? Every day. And the bad thing about it, if you hit it, you can be broke in five years. Because you don't understand money. You don't understand economics. You don't understand finances. Look at all these athletes that make millions of dollars and within three to five years after they be tired and broke. True that. That's, that's everybody who doesn't take the time to learn economics, that's learn right. finance. That's right. That's a lottery mentality. That is a lottery mentality. Action. See, rich folks don't have, you know what? It's all black folks in here, everybody online is black. <laughs> White folks don't think about us. We think about them. 
I'm going to tell you how bad it is for us. The next time you're in a building, that's three, but that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty stories high. Go to a window and look out. As far as you can see, and all you're going to see is more buildings and more city, more businesses, more people, more cars. Trillions and trillions of dollars. And we only own less than 3%. Mm. Wow. Think about it. As far as you can see, people of color own less than 3%. And I can tell you the reason why that is, but that's a whole different story. Don't get me started, y'all. Y'all get me started on that. I can forget the rest of this. Because I'll go with that. Because I've got stuff. I don't think I even have it on the table. The uh, uh, black dollar, black wealth. Mm -hmm. I heard that. Okay. You got to get my CD, baby. <laughs> yes, I, it, I got to give you a chance to get that, too. <laughs> Number three. Average people think the road to riches is paid with formal education. I went through that earlier. Rich people believe in acquiring specific knowledge. Are y'all seeing the difference in the two? Yeah. Yeah. Average people think the road to riches is paid with formal education. It's not. And education is great because that's something no one can ever take from you. What rich people believe in acquiring Specific, you see that word specific? Knowledge means to a, to what it is they're doing that they study. That's why come I study so much, because I'm a mind dollar. I want to know how to mess with, I operate on your mind. You want to know what my, what my doctorate is in? Mindology. I gave myself that degree. I earned it. I studied on the mind and the thought process. To make me a man of It's specific knowledge. Now, here's the thing. You hear people say, information is power. Knowledge is power. Don't believe it. Implemented knowledge and implemented information is power. It must be implemented. Because having it and not using it is like me saying, okay, I want to go for this shopping center up the street, and I know when I go to light which way I gotta turn. I gotta turn which way? I gotta turn right. I gotta turn right. I turn left. I know how to get there, but I turn left. That means I'm not implementing the knowledge that I know. Are y'all seeing the difference? Yeah. Uh Alex, I have two ladies right there, make them millionaires. Y'all, I want y'all to do this for me. I want y'all to give my staff a round of applause. Y'all stand up and bow to me. <laughs> now you see what I'm doing for the youth? Yeah. They go where I go. I didn't set this up. They set it up. I just said, do this, do that, and walked away, and you see it. They're filming about all y'all. We're all being filmed. Number four, average people earn money doing things they don't love. Rich people follow their passion. I'm here to love, oh, uh, can I get a snap on that? <laughs> average people earn money doing things they don't love. Lord have mercy, I got to get up and go to work this morning. I hate my job. I hate my supervisor. I hate everything. I hate everybody. On a job. <laughs> but rich people follow their passion. My passion is to, to be doing what I'm doing. Y'all, there isn't a drug out there that can get me as high as I am right now. I am so high because I'm standing here doing what is my passion. I'm doing my passion. I'm going to give y'all a fact. Are y'all aware of the fact that Monday, every Monday, is when most people have their heart attacks? Monday morning, between 6 and 10 o'clock. 
more people having heart attacks than any other time of the week. Why? Stressed, you done had two days off where you can say, ah, you ain't got to worry about this nigga. You wake up and say, oh my God, I got to go to somewhere I hate. Monday blues. That's what it is, Monday blues, my brother. Mondays. Because you're doing things that you don't love. You know what? I do, and you know this is free, y'all. But here's the thing about it. I'm so good at it, people pay me. Why? Because of my passion. I'm giving y'all something that people pay me thousands of dollars for. Hello? Why? It's my passion. But I'm so good at it that people pay me. I just said, um, I just said, oh, for her old show. She used to always say, she never talked about money. She always said, follow your passion. Well, it is. That's what it's about, following your passion. That's what I'm doing. You know, I'm following my passion. I really, I mean, I got news for y'all. Y'all haven't seen my struggle. Y'all have yet to see my see what my struggle was. There are nights when I cried myself to sleep. How am I going to pay that note? How am I going to pay for my rent for my buildings? How am I going to do that? But it's all business related. Like I said, I work from Can't See Sun Up to Can't See Sun Down. I've done it many a time. I've had to go to people and say, look, man, can you loan me $500? I'll give it back. And work them to now look at it. It's my passion that I'm doing. And I didn't give up. Number five, average people set low expectations so they'll never be disappointed. Rich people are up for the challenge. I've covered that already. Average people set low expectations so they're never disappointed. You can't be successful living in a comfort zone. It is relatively impossible to be successful if you're always comfortable. See, success is being uncomfortable constantly but working on your uncomfort until it's comfortable. Because when that gets comfortable, then you got a bigger avenue that you've got to conquer that's going to give you more. Does that make sense? Yes. I don't mind being disappointed as long as I'm putting forth the effort. Oh, this, I need to plug it in. Uh, plug my cord. It's in my thing. Plug it in because it's going to blank out. They know how to handle all this stuff, y'all. That's my, that's, that's, that guy right here, he knows all my, that's my technology. How old are you, uh, whatever your name is. <laughs> 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 Hello? 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 I'll call him everything. You know, they always say, well, you know, your first name, well, you know who I'm talking to. <laughs> Am I going over, uh, Oh, I got a long time to wrap up. <laughs> Am I good? Yeah. I have them out by midnight. <laughs> okay, well, I'm letting the question and answers go along. But we can do that. If anybody's online got questions, oh, by those online, let me ask you to do this. Please share this. Hit share. If you're online, just hit share. So you can put it out and let your friends know what it is that you're doing. This might be vital to them. So please hit share. You gotta hurry up, man. It took too long, hurry up, man. I hope I can get back again. Oh, y'all gotta wait a moment, my computer just died. Oh yeah, let me have some Q&A real quick while my, he kissed my computer going again. I, I was gonna ask you a question. Okay. Um, if a person thinks that they do something really well, like that they really do love, like you said. Uh, they really love it, and they really believe that they're good at it. What's the first step in what they would do to try to start doing it to make a living or, or making it an income from what they do well? The first thing you have to do, what did I tell y'all do if you ain't get, 
I mean, to think it. Right. You got to put them around. You got to get busy. Because see, you don't never know. I'm looking for people that I can invest in. See, all your knowledge does me no good. But I want to do the first thing I'm going to ask you is let me see your business plan. Yes. You can have, your credit score can be minus 300. But if you show me a business plan where we can make the money, you think I'm going to give you money that you can make money? So you got to put it in writing. You really do. So you got to take time to put it in thought and put your thought in writing. Because, see, once you put it in writing, you know, you give it to your universe. And your universe is got it then. It's like, say, it's going to work ten times as hard as you to give you what you want. But all you got to do is, you got to work now. What y'all, let me tell you what it is. You know what y'all see standing before y'all right now? What you're looking at is my 40 year overnight success. Wow. <laughs> 40 year overnight success. Like I said, you know, you haven't seen my been through. But I have been through hell. I know what it's like. And it is hot there. And it's hot. You think it's hot outside? Oh no. Wait till you try to go into business and you start going through hell. Uh, can I say that? Okay. <laughs> but am I am I touching anyone? I don't want y'all to go sleep on me. No. Number six. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Average people believe you have to do something to get rich. Rich people believe you have to be something to get rich. Now, here's where we kind of disagree on that. I'm going to need that. I need that right now. Open that back. Here's where we kind of disagree. It says, average people believe you have to do something to get rich, or rich people believe you have to be something to get rich. I, my thing is, you got to do something and be something. Otherwise, you got to do what it takes, do your study. Do your research and be that one that's going to do that, that's going to do something that other people don't do. The question, I want y'all to write this down. I want y'all to, to write this down. Question. You answer every day. What did I do yesterday that I have to work on today to improve my tomorrow? What do you think will happen if you ask yourself that every day? What did I do yesterday that I have to work on today to improve my tomorrow? Hello. There's that third eye and that third ear again. But because of what I'm telling you, if you think it, and you see how everything's a circle. Do you realize that everything I'm teaching y'all is just a circle? Yeah. It's going around and it's coming back. All this comes back to, of course, as an individual, it comes back to your passion. Because uh, you would find people who are not passionate about anything. They they, yeah, some of them are successful, but they're successful with struggle. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, an unnecessary struggle. Because you got people out there that are successful and they, something they don't like, but they were so good at it that they got paid for it. So, so they didn't necessarily have a passion for it. They just have to be good at it? Is that what you, well, you know, there's an exception to every rule. Yeah, there's always an exception. But the odds of you being that one, the odds of you being that one, it's, too extra, it's like the lottery. Yeah. Hello, it's a lottery mentality. I don't like it, but I can do it because they did it and was good at it and made money. That might not be God's purpose for you. See, here's the thing about it you have to realize. What's the, I know y'all y'all know this, but what's the two greatest days of your life? Nope. The day you born, the day you die, ain't it? Nope. The day you realize why. The day you are born. And the day you realize why. 
I'll make that gentleman back there a millionaire. <laughs> Uh, they got it, Alice. Oh. One at a time, Alice. Don't give them nobody two. Right. I ain't making no double millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so you stopped the purpose. Yeah. See, now here's my thing. As, as many businesses I've had, and I've had several, and I've never failed in none of them. But here's the thing about it. Each one grew me into what I am now. Can I live that way? Why? I grew into the person who could. Everything that happened to me in the past, and I want y'all to remember this, there's a big difference in what I'm ready to tell you. It didn't happen to me. This didn't happen to me. That surgery didn't happen to me. It happened for me. When you look at life, that it is not happening to you. But it's happening for you, that means you're realizing that everything is a life lesson and you're taking the lesson that God gave only you at that moment to learn that lesson. That was a lesson nobody could learn but you. Because it's your... I just wanted to add to that 300 pound weight, once you grow into that person, then you add 300 more pounds. Every time you climb the mountain and look over, there's always another mountain to climb. Challenge. That's what makes you grow and do better. What did I just ask you that you got to write down and say every day? What did I do yesterday that I got to, that I got to work on today to improve my tomorrow? Y'all getting it. Y'all are starting to see what I'm really saying. That third eye, that third ear. I'm hoping I'm giving y'all something. I really do. Thank you for the snap. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We get that. All right, now I love you. There ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> Average people believe you need money to make money. How many people heard that? You got to have money to make money. Yeah. But I don't Ooh, somebody it. lied to y'all. Somebody lied to you. Rich people yeah. Yeah. use other people's money. Yeah. O P M. Come on now. Do you think Donald Trump uses money to buy those? No, All that no, property he's got? No, not you think Oprah used <laughs> no, her no. money to buy those studios? No, I don't. You think Magic Johnson used his money to buy all these businesses? Magic. No, they use OPM, baby. Yeah. And you got other people out there who's willing to give it to you if you put together the plan to show them a return on your body. ROI. Return on investment. ROI. Return on investment. Yes, my brother. Do you recommend going to banks to, to, get, uh, to get loans? Yes, and I'm going to tell you why. Only if you have the ability and the know-how to make successful and pay back the money. Now, people who can't, because the gentleman who owned Wendy's filed bankruptcy seven times. Wow. Donald Trump has filed bankruptcy nine. But what, 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 how, much, how much money do they have now? <laughs> Is it right? I mean, you, you got some good, some bad about it. You really do. You got to be smart about it, but you want to keep that good credit. Uh, when I... I'm going to teach y'all about licensing. That's at the end of the month. Y'all got to come to that. I'm going to tell y'all about that too. But you got to learn to, you know, you got people out there that are looking for people like you. But you're no valuable to nobody unless you got that business plan, baby. Show me how I can get my ROI. Return on investment. So where do you find these people who are looking to, how do you how do I find? I got a lot of ideas that I've wanted to do, but just like I'm the average person, didn't think that I thought I needed the money and I didn't have the money to, to, to get it started. So What do you want to do, darling? Tell me what you want to do. I'm going to give you the money right now. Show me your business plan. 
That's what I, I have Bam. to bring that up. There it is right there. So that's number one. Number one. Training. I need to know how to make a good business plan. And then how do I get it in front of the right people to get me some money to fund my, my plan? That's a very good question, baby. Who's standing before you? <laughs> you. What do I own? I don't know. I'm president of the Millionaire Mastermind Institute. Okay. Right? I do events, and people of wealth come to my events. I have educators. People of wealth are, my, are the educators that have teaching me. Like, this is my specialty, thought and action. But this is, institute has, just like any other institute, it has professors, experts, but I do too. You got to put yourself before these people. Here's the thing, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. Then, and when I heard this, I, it, it made a lot of sense to me, although it was, a, it was said in a joke, but it's true. God put blessings in people's laps every day. You want to know why come none is in your, in your lap? Because you haven't put your lap where God's dropping the blessing. <laughs> Make sense? Yes. If God had put a, a blessing in your lap, move your lap to where God putting the blessings. Where he's dropping the blessing. You can't want and not do the process. And having it in your mind is totally useless. Who do you know is a mind? God's name is not even a mind reader. God can't read your mind. I got news for you. See, the universe, which is your universal God, the universe doesn't speak language. It doesn't speak English. It speaks frequency. What frequency are you putting out there? I'm standing up and telling my universe, hey, I need some money to grow my institute so I can continue to travel all over the country. But I'm putting it out to my universe. It's frequency. That's why you speak it. Do you know the most, one of the most important things you can ever do? And when you come to my classes, and each and every one of you need to start attending the Millionaire Master Institute classes, so you can find out where we're at. How many of y'all, I guarantee you, how many of y'all have ever heard of me before, heard of this before today? Why? I'm all over social media. I'm all over TV. I'm all over radio. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? We're here. And here's the thing about it. I'm going to introduce you to everybody you need. Or you're going to meet everybody you need right through my institute. You got to put yourself where God is dropping the blessings. Here's what my, I believe is. Here's what my belief is. And I live, like I said, I wake up in the morning and I say, thank you, more please. Do you know what my purpose every day is? To be a blessing to whoever enters my life space. You know my life, I want to be a blessing to you. I just wanted to add to the sister right here who was asking, one thing I know is important is getting out and networking. Like you really have to get out and network because you never know who's going to be in attendance at that place and who you're going to connect with. But that's like how he's saying, come to the events and you, the educators that he brings in. If you can connect with one of them, that could be that person to take you to the next level. But you got to get out there and connect because, you know, sitting at home, we have these great ideas, but it's going to so good if we're just sitting on it. We got to get out there and go to the people. You don't realize, darling, you just meant the blessing of your, the blessing of your life. Because if I'm going to give you, the people you're going to meet, you're going to turn your life on. Uh, make that young lady a millionaire, Alex. You see who my money man is, don't you? <laughs> right here, Alex. Right here. And um, tell them about the money, million, million dollars that was crossed with this wallet. Okay, here's the reason I give y'all millions. Because y'all don't realize every day I carry it in my pocket every day. I'm going to tell you a story. Who knows the story about Jim Carrey? Oh, yeah. I, Everybody here knows who Jim Carrey is, though, right? I know the story. The actor. He carried in his wallet a check for $10 million. He said, I give myself five years to be to cash this check. 
right before his five years was up, guess what happened? He gets a contract to do the movie Dumber and Dumber. Guess how much they paid him to do it? Ten million. You think the power of the mind and you give it to a universe and then doing the action doesn't work? Look at Oprah. She has a story similar to that. Look at William Murray. He's got a story similar to that. That's why I come I carry millions and a million dollars around my pocket every day. Now I gave y'all millions, right? Because they say the, the, um, the first million is always hard to make. Well, I just gave you the first million. Go out there and make it a reality. I just gave it to you. What you do with the, what I just gave you to make it a reality is totally up to see. Life is full of two things. No, one great thing. And that's choices. Yeah. See, you are where you are doing what you're doing because of choices you made. You made. Looks like this little young man has a question. He keeps raising his hand. Then what do you do? You have a question? What's your question? When you said the, um, the, um, the million dollars that you just gave us, I was thinking if you put it in your bank account and save it up. Well, you, now, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a, show you how good he is, how right he is. He, he said, the million dollars that I gave y'all, put it into the bank and save it up. I'm going to give y'all a little tip how to get money. I'm going to give y'all one of my little secrets that I usually teach in class when I do my finance class. At the end of every month, because, you know, some of us got more month than we do money. <laughs> but if you have money left over, at the end of the month, you don't say, oh, now I'm going to get them shoes I want, or I'm going to the outfit. No, which what you do. You take that money left over at the end of the month, put it in the savings account, and never touch it. Start all over each month with just the money you have at the first of the month. When you get to the end of the month, you got $20 left over, $100 left over, don't spend it. Because take it and put it somewhere and start all over fresh every month. And you will be surprised. Now, I'm going to ask you, here's another question. I'm hiring. The job is very hard, very strange, will take time. And I'm willing to pay a million dollars for the job. Or oh, I said, no, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to challenge you. I think I'm going to be cheap. I'm going to give you a penny, double it every day. And the answer to that question is who I hire. Who am I hiring? The penny or, or the million dollars? That's, you know why I'm hiring the, the penny? Why it's better for you to be the penny? Because at the end of one month, if a penny doubles every day, a penny today, two cents tomorrow, four cents the day after, eight cents, 16 cents, 32 cents, at the end of the month, you get a check for $3,867. A penny multiplied. I'm going to say, oh, no, man, give me the million, baby. Yeah, okay, good. I'm gonna, I'm, you're going to earn every million of it, too. Well, you could have had $3,867,000. That's what we're doing, y'all. We're taking that million instead of that penny. You got to put that penny away. He said, oh, man, that ain't enough to save. Yes, it is. Save a penny for 100 days and what you got. A dollar. Now multiply that time to like that. Little money makes what? Big money. I got news for you. No one in here can have a dollar in your pocket if you first didn't have that penny. Because it takes a hundred pennies to make a dollar. I don't care if you pay for money and it's a dollar. It still took a hundred pennies to make it. Think about what I'm telling you. Little money. Makes big money. I don't pass up pick. I see a penny in the street, y'all got to get up. I picks it up. I pick it up. And I got a little bike, I got a bike at home that my wife and I was dropping in. My wife, can I tell them a story about you walking every morning and say, okay? 
My wife walks every morning, three miles, every morning. In, in the neighborhood, our neighborhood, in Indianapolis, it's got cul-de-sacs and it's got up and down hills, so she walks. And she picks up pennies or nickels and dimes, it's lame that people drop and don't pick. You know how much she had last year? How much you had last year, baby? $24 picking up pennies and stuff that people just drop out there. Just from walking. $24 ain't a whole lot of money. It's a lot more than what if you don't pick it up. Do that for 20, 10 years. Plus, she's healthy. Because she's walking. Y'all, let me keep on. I got to cover y'all. Number eight. Average people live beyond their means. Rich people live below the earth. This is one of the most important things and the problem we as a people of color have. Average people live beyond their means. You got that big TV in your house, that big, big screen. I got to have one. I guarantee y'all, y'all got a seven or eight phone. You driving a big SUV or a brand new car. The worst investment you can ever make is a brand new car. The worst investment. You, if you can't pay it off at the end of the month, you're living above your means. Think about what I'm telling you. Rich people live below their means. How many of y'all ever read the story of, of, of uh, what's the rich guy in America? Warren Buffett. Any of y'all read the story of Warren Buffett? Guess what he drives? A hoop. Warren Buffett drives a hoopty. The guy I used to borrow thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars off of when I was in the real estate investment. I swear I don't believe this guy even owns a pair of pants. Every it could be 10 feet of snow, he got on a pair of shorts. He drove an old beat up hoopty that he ain't worse since the day it was made. <laughs> and I would go in and say, man, I just got my house, I need 300000 He just sent me the paperwork on it. And go and go get the house. Hello. You have got to learn to live below your means. There's a story that there, think of this. Here's, here's what happened. One day this guy comes home and busts in the door, talking about honey. We no longer have to keep up with the Joneses. They moved. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got news for y'all to help with the Joneses. See, the Jones can't do like I do go where I want to go when I want to go there. Because they're too busy paying that for that H, that, 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 Stop living above your means. You question for y'all, ladies. Would you? How many of y'all like name brand bags? The question is, see that? that uh huh. Here's the, here's the question that you got to ask yourself. Would you rather have a five hundred dollar purse with ten dollars in it, or a ten dollar purse with five hundred in it? Now, here's another question I got for everybody. How many millionaires are in your closet? How many name brand stuff are you buying? Because all you're doing is paying for their opinion a lot of why they're out on the island, their yacht, or their vacation, while you busting your butt just to keep them living like they're living, while you struggling trying to keep them living like they're living. I own clothing stores. I had several at a time. And I'm going to tell y'all a story. <laughs> I had some jeans that wouldn't sell. I don't care what, they would not sell. So what I did, I took my little logo, put it right here on it, and put a little patch right there. They were selling $24. I'd start $59 and couldn't keep them. Same jeans! The only thing changed after that little one dollar pass right there, little five cent label right there. That's what you're doing when you buy name brand. 
It costs seventeen dollars to make a pair of Jordans and ship to this country. Seventeen dollars. One fifty two hundred dollars for a pair. It makes no sense. You you see all you doing? How many millionaires you got in your closet? Y'all don't know this, but no one dresses better than me. I'm, I I I got a wardrobe that y'all not one thing in his name right. Not one. Every, if I told you how much what I got on the stage, cause y'all would laugh. Do I look good? I know I'm so good looking, I can't help but look good. Don't know what I feel. <laughs> but you got to learn to stop living above your means. Stop living a want life and start living a need life. Big difference. There's a movie called Keeping Up with the Jones. I'm sorry, what, what is it? Uh, yeah, brother, I was, I was just saying that there's a movie called Keep It Up with the Jones, and, and, and basically, like, everyone in the movie is like a, like a marketing uh, sales, sales. And so they, they live in this, this house, and they're, all, they're not even related, but they live in this house, and they, they basically market to their, their neighbors. So when the neighbors see them pull up in a new car, they're like, hey, what's that? You know, I've never seen that before. And they, and they basically sell them that, um, that vehicle, whatever, and show them how they can buy it and get a commission. So it's, it, you know, it's selling time. That's, see, th th there's a business in everything. Do you realize that, that you get four ideas that'll make you a billionaire? Four. But are, we, are you implementing in them? I got to rush y'all, I'm sorry. We got to go, we got to gotta go, got to go. Average people would rather be entertained than educated. Rich people would rather be educated than entertained. Wow. Now, here's something I'm going to give y'all real quick. If you were to take the money that's in your pocket and spend it on your brain, it will multiply the money that's in your wallet tenfold. But no, you'd rather go to a concert that costs a hundred something dollars a ticket. You'd rather try to impress somebody by taking them to a restaurant that you really can't afford. Or you'd rather do this and do that rather than take that money and spend it on your brain. That's going to give you something tenfold. That's our problem. Rich people better be educated and entertained. Do you know how many? All, most of the events I go to, y'all, when I'm doing it, it's not for wealthy people. People with means. And they're there listening. Just like me, I'll be the, in the audience. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm a student. When I'm on stage, I'm the educator. Average people think rich people are snobs. Rich people just want to surround themselves with like-minded people. Do you know how powerful that is? Oh, you he take you something. Look at him. He's got it. But you don't like I said, you don't know what's been through to get where he is. Here's what we like to see. I'm not gonna sit around with people that's gonna talk about somebody. Or talk about what they own. Or give me their problems. I wanna have a conversation y'all about ideas. Right. That's right. About ideas. Period. That's it. We want to be around like-minded people. If you want to change your mindset, put yourself around those minded people. Put your, put your, put your lap where God is giving you, dropping that blessing. Average people love to be comfortable. Rich people find comfort in uncertainty. Well, I'm not sure that I'm going to sell out this auditorium, but I'm going to rent it anyway and sell tickets. I've done that many a time. It's just saying, well, Lord, we'll get a place that holds about 20 and sell 20 tickets. <laughs> when I got 80 people sitting in there with a pocket, if I had to put them out. See, scared money ain't never going to make no money. Y'all don't know how many times I've tried, I've rented a room and ain't nobody. I, one time I did a, a show down the street. When I used to do live shows and I had like 20 some models, it snowed that day. I had nine vocals and all these marks. Three people showed up. Because of the business. They got the whole show. They took their time to come to my event. Now it would have sold out had not a snow, but I sold it. Three showed up. Because I, I could have said, look, y'all go home, we ain't have no show. I'm like, no. Nope. We gave them the whole show. Wow. 
Here's, here's what's going on. Here, here's the difference between us, well, average people and wealthy people. Wealthy people teach their children to acquire Rich or middle class teach their children how to sell. And here's what the poor do. The poor teach their children how to buy. Let a new phone come out. Or let a new Jordans come out. You see the line around the building. But let me say I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a session to teach you how to become wealthy, and I guarantee you I won't get 20, 30 people in that room that's in that line. Yeah. Which one of these, out of all 11 of those, which one are you? Oh, by the way, that's who I am. President Green, I'm out of my institute. Yeah, that's Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm giving them my gifts. I'm giving them my stuff. I'm going to write this down. Every Tuesday evening, every Tuesday for five years we've done with 300 shows. You see proof of a lot of them right here in the business Bible. All you got to do, and it's from 9 to 10 o'clock, and it's free. It's a conference call and promises. You can take pictures. You dial 218-548-0510. It's 218-548-0510, and the pin number is 1950. Tune in. Tune in and listen. And we open up the lines so you can ask questions to all the brilliant people we have online. And if you have a business, you can do business right on the call. Last week we did a, we did a session, and I swear this, people on my line spent a lot of money with each other. They were talking about, oh, you do what? Oh, can I get your number? One lady has a shop right now where if it's, if it's homemade, she, she'll sell it for you. It's got to be handmade, I'm sorry. Handmade. It was handmade. So Tuesday evenings, y'all are free. On back of the card, you'll see it. It's on back of the card. I'm giving away a free gift. Everybody write this down. I'm moving right along, brother. I want y'all to write this down, give away a free gift. Pull out your phone. Pull, everybody, pull out your phone. I want you to type the word road or text the word road, R-O-A-D. Road. To 931. 269-1010. Type the word road to 269, I mean 931-269-1010. You'll get a free gift from me. It's called Success Made Easy. It's where I broke down success, show you how easy it is to be successful. <coughs> Here's what the mean I'm asking you to do is for y'all. I've put together over 60 plus of my previous shows. Over 60 of my top shows. Can you go back to the text number? Did everyone get the text number? No, you no, probably went too fast. Well, I'm trying to move right along. <laughs> the text number the conference call is 218-548-0510 oh, for the gift. You're in the way. Just slide over some. It's at the bottom there, 931 Oh, that's the 10, road. 10. That's for road, yes. To get the free gift, type the word road to 931-269-1010. I'm sorry, y'all. I forget, I forget I'm, I'm not invisible. Now, here's what we've done for, like I told you. I put, you see evidence. I put over, oh, oh, we've done 300 shows. I took 60-some of the top shows and put it where you can get them. Y'all like this one? What do you hear when I really did this? It's on there. Thinking like rich people think. It's www.empowermentsessions.info. Guess what I'm charging you for all of that information. Over 30 hours of information. And see, I, I, I believe in the spirit, y'all, numerology. I'm charging you $13 a month. $13. I ain't going to tell y'all the regular price on this. This is something special I'm doing for y'all. $13 a month for all of these sessions. Well, you, you ain't gonna get this no more like that, y'all. Because this brother, y'all need to thank this brother that I'm here giving y'all this. <laughs> because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be giving y'all this offer. Just go to www.
empowerment sessions dot info. Thirteen dollars, y'all. Y'all get all these classes like this. How'd y'all like this? One? All right. Now here's what we got coming up. I'm gonna give y'all what we got coming up real quick. We're doing a five-hour workshop at the end of the month. Five hours. I mean five day, I'm sorry, five day workshop. Go to my institute, it's on the it's on the car and stuff. I know it's not. Uh give everybody a flyer. And it's at my institute, y'all. Five days, 20 hours. And you're going to be educated by the top educators in their specific expertise. Marketing and branding, licensing, health, website, sales, business plan, marketing, branding, social media, graphic design, business technology, financing, public speaking, and more. And I'll tell you what, should I do this special? Should I give them a special? Should I give him a special? <laughs> give him a special? Okay. It's $179. It, we right now, I've got an early bird special of 149 If anyone buys today, it's $125. Only today only. Why we're here. See my wife. Hold your hand up, wife. $125. You can come to the class five days. And when you leave there, you have everything you need in business. You hear what I'm doing? Y'all see it on there. Well, if not, you can do the early bird special, and that's only good on Friday. After that, it goes back to $179. You don't, don't want to miss this. I usually charge hundreds of, of dollars for this. I mean hundreds. Did you mention coming up on the next couple of weeks on shoot day night conference call, some of the educators will be on there if you guys want to get a feel for what you're going to get at the event at the end of the month, some of the educators will be speaking on the conference call. So on the back of your business card that I just handed out is the conference call information. Now, you know, we're always looking for educators. Some of you out there are brilliant. I usually get people. We're online, y'all, so it's really not really getting us out there. We're always looking for educators. What's your expertise? All you got to do is text the word MM Educator, MMI Educator, to 931 Two six nine ten ten, or you can send the email to mminstitute914 at gmail.com. Everything's on on the on all the information on our website at mminstitute.info. I got to roll right along, y'all. And if you're interested in getting an email, all you got to do is uh, text the word MMI email to nine three one two six nine ten ten. That's nine three one two six nine ten ten. And text the word email, and for you online, we'll, we'll add you to the email email list, and you'll, you'll get a reply on things you need to do. Oh, see, I'm not going to be able to do this one, y'all. Uh, let me go ahead and do this real quick. I'm not going to be able to do this. This is going to be one of the sessions I teach. The 10 controls, the 12 personal controls that you have to have, and I'm going to teach y'all. 12 personal controls. And that's a session of class within itself that's going to be at the end of the month when y'all come to the event. And my book, I told y'all about my book, Climbing the Zest Mountain. I went, uh, it's right here, y'all, I, I have them. So come up and buy your book. I'll autograph it for you. And baby, you can come up here, baby, and, and get ready for this. So all y'all, get my book, Climbing the Zest Mountain. Because it's, it's you. You're the character in it. And y'all go wonder, well, how did he put me in the book? Read the book and find out about your spirituality and power that is in you that you don't even know. We all go through struggles and stuff, hard times. Sometimes you just have to bow your head, say a prayer, and weather the storm. And I got an amen on that. Amen. <laughs> and a snap, too. <laughs> now, if any of y'all want to book me for the Institute, all you got to do is call 240. 619-2019, we'll come to you. We're mobile. And the number's on the card, y'all. Everything's there. Or go to the institute. Go to the website at mminstitute.info. And y'all, my theme song, I love my theme song. Can y'all hear that? How many of y'all remember that? Who knows what that song is? 
Nope, that ain't it. That's right. 1968, Curtis Mayfield, we're a winner. We're a winner. And don't let anyone ever say that you, you can't do it. But we're moving on up. Everybody, we're moving on up. Hanging out with the media of Mass Man too, let me get you that. Do y'all how how did I do okay today? Let's give our brother another round of applause. This was uh, I think it was very refreshing. You get used each week, we hear the same, hear the same old irritated genie over and over, you're gonna get tired of it. This is what we want. We want people who are in the community, who are doing things, have uh, gifts that they can bring to the table to come, take that opportunity to come and speak to our people, and that way we can get a different variety of things from a lot of different uh, angles in our community, because the only way we're going to fix it, it's like a puzzle. I listen to the master teacher, he's one of my teachers, uh, Ashra Kwesi, and one of the things he says, he says, none of us have all the answers. Anybody that says that or thinks that, they're lying to themselves and everybody else. He said it's like a, a mirror that gets broken that you got to put back together. It's a bunch of pieces, and you can't look in that mirror and get an actual picture of what's happening by looking at one piece. You got to put each one of those pieces together appropriately and correct, and then you get a full picture. And our economic uh, uh, self-sufficiency and uh, uh, motivation, our brother Kane gave us today is one of those pieces. So let's give him another round of applause. And what we're going to ask people to do is, um, my brother has his table here. And see, I have CDs too for some of my shows. Y'all might want to check out my CDs. They're just $10. So we got, he has his books, and he has his CDs, and all CDs, and he did these all CDs. All CDs, and, and, and the book is just $15. All right, so we got a $15 book, $10 CDs. Anybody that wants them, we want to ask people to come on up, support our brother for coming out, sharing that great information. He didn't charge us a dollar to do that. And um, he'll be right here at the table if you want to talk to him, get the book, sign the book. And also, we want to ask, you know, of course, we have our stuff at the front, Sister Al Kamal and Irritated Genie, yours truly, we have it there. We want to uh, ask you to come support the tables as well on your way out. And <clears throat> do one more thing, liberation at waronthehorizon.com. We didn't pass around our uh, email list today because we wanted him to be able to get and keep in touch with people today. But what we want you to do is, we have a lot of things coming up. Next week, like we said, we're going to be talking about male-female relationships and how to repair the black men and women's relationships, serious dialogue. But there are other things we need to be talking about. We want you to start sending in emails. Let's talk about this. Do you know anybody that can talk about this? If you hear somebody, send in a suggestion. Hey, we think this person would be great. You think maybe we could get them, particularly if they're in the local area. We really want to focus on concentrating with brothers and sisters. We got a lot of talented black people in this area. And really, in this area, we don't really have a lot of stages for people to come that's reasonable and us to really talk real and say what we want to say. And this is one of those stages. So you help us and let us know. And we'll give them the opportunity to do it. So with that said, yes, ma'am. Liberation at war on the horizon.com. And you can also send us an email, say, hey, add me to your email list. That's the word at or the symbol. The, the at symbol. So it's liberation, the at symbol, war on the horizon.com. Send us an email, say, add me to your email list, and then you'll get an email of every event that we have like this, the people that we're here, how many people got an email for this event? And you saw our brother was going to be here. Nobody in there? Nobody I, come back. I hope y'all come back All right. again. That's right. And then uh, when the brother comes back, I like that he invited himself. He said, I know I'm coming back. <laughs> Absolutely. I hope I helped him. I hope I gave him something. Absolutely. We would definitely uh, have that. And we also have our radio program, so we'll yes. be able to have our brother on the radio program. Uh, with that said, I want everybody to come on over. Anybody that wants to come up and uh, support. Also, don't forget to support the business. Everlasting Lights on the way out. And for everybody that's been asking, because I've been getting a lot of people asking me about the strawberry shea butter, the straight black craft strawberry shea butter. We're going to have it next Wednesday. We keep selling out much faster than I think, so we're going to have it. So everybody out there that keeps coming and hounding me, I promise you, next Wednesday, we're going to have it fully in stock, ready for everybody that's interested in getting the baby powder and the uh, strawberry. So 
Anybody got anything else in closing before we go? Going once, going twice. All right, that's chopping it up. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I want to thank all of y'all. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here if you want to buy a book and I autograph it for you. Uh, we take credit cards. Let me turn it over.